Hey, it's Dave. So it's the second full day driving around version 12.3 of Full Self Driving Beta. And I'm going to show you my top hits and misses from driving around in central Austin today. <clears throat> nice. Uh, FSD 12.3 just made a cool maneuver, slow down, let the car go in front, and then made a right turn so we can go on this uh, uh, on-ramp. <clears throat> okay, we've got this super tricky turn into this parking lot. It's actually blocked off the entrance. So we'll see what FSD 12.3, yeah, here's the blocked off entrance. Here is the entrance out. Oh my goodness, it's taking it. It's taking the entrance out and this is actually a temporary setup. It's a two-way driveway that they made to um, temporarily make it in and out for people to go, oh my gosh, that was amazing, 12.3. All right, so here's another look uh, at this parking lot entrance. So on the right side, it's kind of got this, um, this is the way out. On the left side over there, it's the way in. That's blocked off. So you only have one way and they kind of cut this in half. It's kind of a, it's a tight, it's, it's a little shorter than, than two car lengths. I mean, it might, it, two cars barely fit through. Maybe it is two car lengths, right? But it's pretty tight and they, they hacked it where the right side goes out and the left side goes in. It's not supposed to be like that, but 12.3 figured it out. Let's try again at, from a different angle, turning into here from the left side and see what FSC 12.3 does. All right, so we're gonna try to enter that parking lot from a different, from the other side of the street. So we're gonna try to turn left into the parking lot, but again, the entrance to the parking lot is blocked off. They did a temporary uh, detour or a hack job where they took the other side where a car is supposed to go out and they divided it into a temporary two lane thing. Now this is really hard to, to make sense of here. Um, I think it would confuse probably over half of human drivers at least. They wouldn't know what to do. So we'll see if a 12.3 figures out that um, it not only can it not go through the de into the detour section, but it has to figure out that it can go into this uh, temporary makeshift entrance. Okay, it's trying to go into the detour. Now it's like detour, it's making its way over here. Oh my gosh, it does it again. It figures out that it can go through this, um, yeah, this exit um, side of the parking lot. Yeah, this is FSD 12.3. Very, very impressive there. All right, so we have a situation where we're needing to move to the right lane, and um, it kind of decided a little bit late, and luckily we we made it all the way across four lanes because. There isn't much traffic right now, but that's one of the challenges with V12.3 is it should um, improve. I mean, Tesla needs to improve V12 to the point where it can anticipate right lane changes earlier on, when, especially when it needs to make a, a, a turn later. Uh, I think it just needs more video data. Um, yeah, it needs that feature built into it, right? Uh, you can't expect it to happen automatically so it needs basically a lot of examples of people needing to turn at a certain place and the driver right moving over to those lanes early on right and uh, as a sign of a of good driving behavior right um, and maybe signs of bad driving behavior of just trying to like wait until the last minute right to turn in All right, we've got a situation where a car is parallel parking. FSD 12, wow, it does the exact right thing. I mean, it's hard to uh, to um, express all the things that are going on at that moment. It's the amount of, of waiting, the amount of assertiveness, the path to take around the car, when to do it. There's so many variables just in that small sample size. And FSD 12 did a great job. It just shows like this level of intelligence to sort it out and know exactly what to do at the right time in that situation. Super impressive. <clears throat> All right, here's the situation that says no right 
turn on red Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. FSD should turn right, actually, because it's Sunday, so it doesn't know. So I guess there's something going on where, I don't know, maybe it doesn't know the day of the week? <laughs> Interesting. I had to press the accelerator a tiny bit to get it to move forward. Okay, we got stuck here a little bit. We've got a bunch of pedestrians on the right, left side here. So FSD is actually doing the right thing, kind of inching out. It's going to cross right after this last pedestrian. Impressive by FSD 12. Okay, we got this super tricky situation. We got a bus here. There's a car to my left. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. The car to my left has it or kind of deferred slightly to my car and FSD took that opportunity to take a left around the bus. Wow. But it, was, it wasn't a big deferring, it was like a slight deferring and it was exactly the right thing FSD did to um, yeah, go around the bus at the exact right time. Super, super impressive. Alright, we've got a red turn. Um, FSD can make a right turn here, but I think it just doesn't know if it's allowed or not or something. Yeah, it's um, interesting. I'm not sure why it's not taking the red. Um, yeah, interesting situation here. Okay, we're going, it's a green light here. FSD should turn left here. Um, yeah, it's a little bit hesitating. I mean, it should go right here. Well, there's a, there is a pedestrian on the left. It's a bit too much hesitating. Huh. Yeah, there's now a car turning right. It's going to let that car turn right. And now it's going to go. It's fine. It's a little bit, yeah, not super confident, right, on that intersection there. Yeah, just back there, it, it recognized that the car um, uh, had to yield to my car. And so it didn't even hesitate or flinch. It just went around that roundabout as normal. Very impressive behavior. Wow, interesting. So it was kind of hesitating on this uh, turn right and then the car behind me slowed down and kind of waved and, and uh, FSD 12 just uh, made the right turn. I, I'm sure it probably wasn't looking at the woman waving, but still, like the FSC is able to see if the car is deferring, right, to a person or not. Here we are, we're stuck in behind this car right now. Um, ah, FSD is a little stuck. It's still getting too close for comfort here. Yeah, I would call this kind of a fail. Yeah, this is a fail on FSD 12 right now. It just didn't recognize this as a car to get around early enough. And now it's kind of stuck because there's too many cars behind me. Yeah, I'm going to disengage. This is a disengagement here. All right, so we are on the freeway here in Austin, Texas. My strong suspicion is the freeway is the old uh, V11 uh, FSD stack or the freeway stack. Um, and the reason is, is because there's no use to try to switch over freeway driving to V12 right now, right? That's not their focus. Um, if you notice, um, yeah, the, the max speed limit was actually um, set not on a kind of a automatic, you know, flexible set, but it was set to a specific um, speed and now it's like changing. Now it's switched to auto, right? So when it switches to auto max, that's I think when we switch over to V12. Uh, point three right now. So right now it's uh, switched over to full self-driving beta. So yeah, I think that's pretty much, um, I wouldn't say 100% confirmation, but that's confirmation to me. Yeah, the, the, F, the, the highway driving is the old uh, highway FSC stack and then, or uh, highway driving, and then we have uh, the full self-driving stack um, activates when it gets off of right the highway and you'll see this auto max if you have that setting set up. All right, here's a tricky situation. Usually, Viva 11 serves to the right, 
nice. Actually, V12 decides to keep in this lane, which it should do, um, and that's impressive. That was a constant V11 uh, headache. I did have a, a run uh, yesterday, though, with V12.3, where it actually did merge or turn right. There wasn't a car there, so that's good. But V11 would actually turn right into that lane, even if there was a car, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, V12, much safer behavior there. Hey, it's Dave. So it's um, the first day of driving V12.3 for me. Just got the update this morning. Have uh, logged about maybe about two, two and a half hours so far. So in this video, <clears throat> as I drive to a destination uh, using V12.3, I want to go ahead and ask the, and share some thoughts on the question of how much better is V12.3 compared to the latest uh, V11 FSD? So <clears throat> there are a few, I think, angles or thoughts um, um, we can take with this. First off, I think there's a, a, a feel um, angle, meaning um, there's a huge improvement with V12.3 in terms of how it feels more natural and comfortable to the human driver. So V11, due to lots of its heuristics and code-based rules, had a lot of rigidity to it. And so it just wouldn't accelerate, brake, or turn in the exact right way that a human would do often. And that causes this sense of, I think, um, tension between the human uh, in the car and right the car itself where the human doesn't feel completely comfortable and v12.3 because it's trained on video data without right the heuristics you've got a system that emulates right human driving very very closely and so it accelerates it breaks it turns in the right way and I think that's going to be um, one of the biggest improvements people notice with the jump from v11 to v12 now that doesn't necessarily make it safer, meaning it could feel safer and it probably will feel safer for the vast majority of people just because it's more natural. Like the unnatural rigidity of V11 kind of makes it feel a little bit unsafe. But V12 will feel, I think, more natural, more human-like, and thus most people will conclude it's, it's safer. However, I think the more important aspect is the actual right critical invention uh, interventions, meaning does it have less... Um, interventions um, and of those interventions uh, does it have less critical interventions as well that's probably the most important thing um, in terms of actual safety right and um, on the bigger picture bigger uh, scale we don't have all that data um, Tesla has data in terms of how many interventions what kind of interventions are happening so they have a better sense on the safety uh, profile of v12 versus v11 um, so all we have is like kind of you know personal anecdotal data um, where people are taking drives right and sometimes it's hours and hours of drive so we can't discount it completely and you get a sense a feel of what the interventions are like and so um, based off of that and based off of my limited driving yeah i haven't had really much you know high critical interventions yet and even the minor interventions have gone down significantly too. Like for example, I'm not needing to press the pedal much at all, if at all. I don't think I've pressed it at all over the past few hours. And I you know, just haven't intervened. Usually with V11, I'm intervening here and there quite often. But yeah, the interventions have gone down actually significantly for me with this V12.3. Now this is the first V12 version I've tested. So um, the earlier versions could have, you know, required more interventions. But so far, um, it feels like an improvement. Now, um, it's impressive because of the time it took for Tesla to get to where um, it is right now. Meaning, if this took like five years to get here, then that's one problem. But their end-to-end -end neural net approach, from what I'm aware of, started a little over a year ago, right? I think it was December 2022, according to... I think the must biography but um, if I'm wrong you know let me know in the comments but yeah it's to go in little over a year to a system that you know is it feels better with less interventions in v11 it's just flat out amazing 
And I think it just shows the power of this N10 neural net approach. And it gives a lot of optimism for the future. If you can just add more compute to power, more data input right into the training, how much better it's going to get. Um, yeah, look at this turn here. It just turns perfectly. Um, it's not just turns perfectly, it's just how it inches up and how it does the turn, like everything, it just, it just feels so much more human. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what I'm looking for especially, and I think we're gonna need um, a lot of this in order to get to a robotaxi level is kind of these emergent behaviors. For example, with ChatGPT, you just have a lot of times where it's like, it's obviously, uh, you know, it's not in the training corpus or data, but ChatGPT uses kind of its abilities to come up with really interesting and new answers or insights to questions that's never seen before. Right? And I think that's what we need to, to, to see a lot of in uh, V12 and future versions where people um, respond by saying, wow, this car drives better than me, right? Or in this situation, you know, I didn't know what to do, but it knew what to do, and it made the right decision, right? Or I didn't know which lane to take, but it took the right lane. But it's not just a once in a while thing, but it needs to be something where it's like quite often, where uh, people are just impressed, and eventually they conclude with rather high confidence that this car drives much better than them, right? And that's the type of, I think, emergent behavior that we're gonna need to see from FSD on a um, frequent basis in order for us to get closer to, I think, to a robotaxi level. Because there's just so many driving situations and challenging driver, driving situations where just good enough or being a so-called whatever, good, good as human is not gonna be good enough. It really needs to excel. Uh, because there are gonna be some uh, kind of weak spots of FSD, right? This artificial neural net driving compared to uh, human biological neural net driving, at least initially. And so in order to offset the weaknesses, uh, FSD needs to be that much better, right, at driving in, in, a, in most of the challenging situations. It really needs to show kind of almost, a, I think, a beyond like average human, right, and into this really, really smart, capable, almost amazing human um, uh, level of discernment or judging a situation and being able to navigate in that situation. So that's my take. Um, yeah, I think... Um, it looks, I mean, I've been super impressed so far in my initial drives with version V1211. And um, yeah, I think it's just setting up um, FSD for the f for this whole year to just improve rather rapidly as Tesla, you know, just puts more data, video data, right, into their training, adds on more compute, the capabilities grow, and uh, potentially we can see more of these type of emergent behaviors or behaviors that, from FSD that just really, really surprise people. All right, anyways, hope that's helpful and I'll, I'll continue to test FSD when I have some interesting thoughts. I'll go ahead and uh, try to post a video and uh, we'll see you guys next time, bye.